Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at this. Yes, it's a silvery bag, but inside the bag is the fairly new, what is it, 32 channel, 200 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter that has hit the market. And it's really small. I mean, hey, you know, the size is becoming an issue with FPV gear because of all these newer, smaller craft like the little 250 size multi rotors and, and here it is, look, it's 200, and 50, or 200 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter with 32 channels. So it ties in very nicely to the new sort of range of 32 channel video glasses like the ones from Skyzone and even things like this video monitor here, this 5.8 gigahertz video receiver monitor which also has 32 channels. So really, really convenient. Now, just a word to mention, just because there are 32 channels don't mean, doesn't mean you can have 32 people flying at the same time because a lot of the channels are very close together and you'll get overlap. So a lot of playing around will be required to find enough gap between channels to let even three or four people fly at the same time. But that's still a lot better than the 1.3 gig band uh, or even the 2.4 gig band where, you know, there's just not that many frequencies to choose from. So you end up stomping on the guy next to you if you're flying FPV. I'll be doing a bit about that in future, about how to avoid that situation where suddenly your picture and your goggles disappears, replaced by someone else who's flying nearby because they're on a similar frequency. We're looking at that in close detail and the things you can do to mitigate that situation. But let's have a closer look at this little video transmitter and see what you get. As you know, we don't do unboxings here on RC Model Review, so there you go, not even un unbagging. But what do you get? You get crappy old linear 5.8 gigahertz antenna, throw that away, useless. 5.8 gigahertz mandates the use of circularly polarized antennas. If you're going to use these things, you're going to get dropouts and reflections. It's going to be really a bad experience. So just toss it. I don't know why they even bother including them. Throw it away because you want to use a circularly polarized one, you know, cloverleaf or skew planer or whatever. Now you get this nice little lead. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful, gorgeous. It's got the wires in it and you get the little video transmitter itself. Let's take a closer look at this little baby. So here it is with my finger as a size comparison. You can see it's really, really tiny and it has, this one has, they have a reverse SMA connector on them. What's that mean? Well, that's the one that has a pin in it. it has a pin in the bit that you plug your cable into, into there. So that's reverse polarized. It's essential to know that because if you try and plug a standard SMA antenna into there, it will not work. So if you're gonna buy one of these and you're gonna get some uh, cloverleaf antennas to go with it, make sure you get them with a reverse polarized connector on them. And it tells us here, obviously it's 32 channels, uh, five gigahertz, 200 milliwatts, blah, blah, blah. And then it's got the outputs or the little pin connections labeled there. That's quite convenient because when you plug your little cable in, you can see which wires which. Simple as that. On the back side, there is this little array of dip switches here that you can use to set the frequency. Unfortunately, as delivered, it's covered in shrink, right, uh, heat shrink. So you have to cut that away carefully so you can actually get at those tiny, tiny little dip switches. And those switches are probably the, the least impressive part of the whole setup. Now, it has a little switch mode power supply down here, which means you can run it off 12 volts because it drops it down to the probably three or so, three to five volts that are needed by all the circuitry inside. It um, does it have a microphone. I cannot see a microphone. It doesn't have a microphone that I can see, which is probably why it has an audio input connection. But a uh, microphone, nah, don't need it. So that's not a big loss. So there you go. It is tiny, tiny, tiny. That connector is also very small. And as I say, with the heat shrinking, you can't actually plug the plug in because there's a piece of heat shrink over there. You have to cut that away with your little knife as well. But they're only tiny little things, nothing really t to worry about. So uh, it's time to put it into something and give it a fly. Installation was a piece of cake, of course, because all I had to do was run the little wires down to the uh, power distribution board on the blackout. It has the video connection here and then the plus and minus there. Easy peasy, I've just cable tied it with some Velcro to the top frame. So when I put this back together like so, it's all gonna sit nicely underneath and the circularly polarized antenna will be up here in the breeze, radiating hopefully a nice strong signal. And no decent review of something like this would be complete without using my wonderful Chinese lottery scales. Yes, they're a lottery scale because look at the zero just changes. It's, oh, I don't know. So not that accurate, but probably accurate enough for our needs. So here's the old one, the old 200 milliwatt transmitter, weighs in at 31 grams roughly, roughly I say because when I take it off look it doesn't go back to zero. <laughs> the new one with its cable weighs in at 14 grams, 13 grams. So really it's you know it's well under half the weight, nearly just a third the weight. Brilliant, excellent, very good in something like the little mini quad where weight is a very important factor. So let's look at how it actually performs in the air. Now the footage you can see here, uh, or you're about to see, was recorded on this uh, with the little DVR LCD screen I got from Foxtech. 
um, recorded at standard definition, of course, are using the uh, Security Camera 2000 690 line uh, camera that I use on all my stuff with a 2.8 millimeter lens. So that gives you an idea of what we're looking at. So I recorded this video, it's an AXN, look, it's an AXN flying. And as you can see, despite the fact that this was recorded without and any diversity and with just simply a skew planar, circular wireless skew planar on the ground in front of my hangar, then the results are pretty impressive. I'm quite happy with that little transmitter. It seems to work really well. There was no real drop fade out, even though at times the operating distance was um, you know, close to probably five, 600 meters. But I mean, I would expect that transmitter to work out to one and a half K, which is what the old 200 milliwatt worked out to. So yeah, I'm really happy with this little transmitter. They seem to work very well. They're very light. And they've got 32 channels, which makes it much easier to set up if you want to use a frequency that no one else is using. So I'd have to say, in summation, oh, they're so small I've lost it. Oh no, here we go. Um, in summation, I'd have to say that, yeah, this is a bit of a thumbs up product, okay? It certainly does the job and it's brilliantly small. And I know it's interesting because uh, is this a knockoff or not? I know that Team Blacksheet produced their little um, 200 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz transmitter that looks very, very similar to this. Tiny little transmitter, it's an excellent little product. Um, the first one they sent me was Dud, they sent me another, but that, and that worked fine. So, yeah, but uh, is it a knockoff? Well, no, it's not really. I mean, the concept's perhaps a knockoff using a very small board and power supply built into the back. But the reality is that this has got a different module, 32 channels, not eight channels like the Team Black Sheep one. Um, but hey, you've got the choice. You can buy the Chinese one with 32 channels or the Black Sheep one with eight channels. It's entirely up to you. That's the great thing about competition in the marketplace. So there you go, thumbs up for this product. I don't see many negatives to it at all. Or if you need a little tiny 200 milliwatt video transmitter, it's going to give you about a kilometre to a kilometre, a kilometre to a kilometre and a half of range with normal skew planar circular antennas. Then go for it. Now it's time for me to get back to the bench. Here's some more footage from that flight, by the way, to see you out to the end of the video.